Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, C2 at DVS, and don't forget to follow, like, and share, and subscribe to our content before you do anything else. Okay, moving on. So, brand new products from Hike Vision. Very familiar casings, but an absolutely brand new technology hardware inside. So, this is the new IDS 7 line range. So, not only do we have the IDS 7 line range in 12 megapixels, so we got 12 megapixel bullet camera, 12 megapixel indoor dome, uh, and there is also an external dome version with the uh, infrared uh, barrier. And we've got the four megapixel IDS uh, bullet camera also. So we do these up to 12 megapixel. The best thing with these cameras is they combine a lot of the VCA technology with inside the same housing, which allows you to select which VCA you want to use on your site. So it gives you like a sort of six in one product essentially. So all these will contain the print perimeter protection like they did before. So the deep in view series, so you've got that advanced um, deep learning algorithm for line crossing and choosing detection, stuff like that, um, for perimeter protection. So it's much better than the standard VCA, even AccuSense. Um, so it follows that IDS NVR uh, analytic essentially. We've also got hard hat wearing, so for construction sites or areas where you need to wear a hard hat for safety reasons, we've got that algorithm built into it now. We've got store counting by face, so if you've got a store that you want to upload the staff faces to them, so they get eliminated from the count, so you get a true reflection of the actual number of people in the store. Then we do uh, store counting by face. We've got queue detection. We've got uh, face recognition, face capture. Uh, even so, you know, they are multi protocol cameras, so it's like an all in one. So you choose the product, choose the algorithm or the analytic that best suits your application, and then, then it allows us to sort of condense the line into one offering. So we're going to fit the internal dome today because we're inside, uh, so it obviously makes sense. Then we're going to transfer you across to the PC and take a look at what these cameras can truly offer and what they can do for you on your premises or applications. So stay tuned while I go and quickly fit one of these, and then join me back on the PC. Cheers! Okay, so a couple of things I want to go through. So I've logged into the camera now, very familiar web uh, interface, so I'm not going to go through that too much. You'll see here, that's the model number of the camera. It's set at 12 megapixel, and this to date is the current firmware. As it's a brand new platform, you'll probably find that the firmware will be released um, in the next few weeks that will enhance it. But for now, this is the latest firmware. So changing the resource type under VCA resource, you can now see the different event types that you can set that enable you to choose the options inside the camera. So you've got face capture. So if you're using it for optimized for face capture and using it with a facial recognition NVR, you can set it that way. Every time you set a new function and click save, the camera will reboot. We've also got hard hat detection, queue management, face counting. That's where you can count people in and out, but add faces to the library that get excluded from the count. So you get a more reflective um, or more accurate count of the store that excludes your staff members. You've got smart event, which is the perimeter protection. So your intrusions, line crosses, region exit, region, ent region enter, uh, unattended baggage, etc. And then multi-target type detection. So if I leave it on smart event right now, and then we'll go through some of the other options. And then you've got metadata if you want to enable the metadata if you're using it with, say, third-party systems, etc. But again, if you're using it with Hike Vision, you shouldn't really have to do this. A couple of cool little things on this that you'll see. Uh, under EPTZ, you can actually enable the EPTZ, which I have done. I've drawn an error, a detection area, uh, enabled it on the fourth stream, and I've got auto tracking on there. So basically what this does is on the fourth stream of the camera, because there are five streams on this camera, I don't really know how applicable this might be to your applications. I just think it's really cool, so I thought I'd show it. You can actually draw a box, detect human or vehicle, and click Save. And on the fourth stream, as I move around that box, the image will zoom in and then obviously um, track me. So if I just go to Video and Audio, choose the fourth stream, and you can see I can set this to 1080p to make it a little bit better. 2048, put H265 on, and Save. So you could add that to a third party system as a stream. If I go to live view, choose stream four. And you can see now, if I move around, you should see this 
follow me. Well, I thought it was cool anyway. So under configuration, so configuration, if I go to event, you've got your basic events there that are still applicable. Um, you know, by default, you've still got motion detection, alarm input, output, audio, etc. Smart event. So I've got all of these smart events because I've left it in smart event mode. I've got all of the standard um, enhanced VCA. So if I go to intrusion detection, I've still got four zones. I've got the human and vehicle detection, thresholds and sensitivities, detection area. So I can draw a detection area here. Um, ma maximum size this, minimum size this, um, human only, threshold two seconds, sensitivity uh, 50%. So basically what this allows now is this is the enhanced VCA. So it's much better than the standard analytic in the camera or even the AccuSense. This is more um, in line with the IDS Deep Learning, Deep in Mind NVR. So it's an enhanced um, algorithm and hardware. So if I go to linkage method, I've got all of the standard linkage methods here. Again, just to show you it working. Enable the rules just so we can see it. And then on live view. So you can see there, I've left the rules on just so you can see this. Uh, actually, let's turn motion detection off. By default, it's on, but it will create a horrible scene on the image. Okay, back to live view. So if I just walk around, you'll see the algorithm sort of detecting me now within this area. Excuse the mess, I'm sort of doing a bit of a refurb in here. So I'll just walk around now and you can see that it should start tracking me or the algorithm should start detecting me. And again, I've been in there for the threshold and then obviously I can come back out. So again, standard VCA functionality. So I'll stop that now. Again, you can um, play with that. That's the perimeter protection mode. So you've got the standard analytic. What I will do now is change it to go in configuration, change the resource type and the network. Oh, sorry, system. It is set at 12 megapixels. So it does take a little bit more time as well. So let's go for hard hat detection and click save. It will reboot. So let me reboot this and join me once it's rebooted. Okay, so the camera has rebooted now. So under configuration, the resource type is now hard hat detection. What you will notice is when you set any of these resources, the actual basic counting function still remains. So what you can actually do is enable counting and enable the OSD display like you've got there in the top right hand corner. You set your detection line um, and you can obviously set it bi-directional, turn it off, reset the counting, arm in schedule them, and then obviously the linkage method. What you basically do then is it is basic counting, so it will count anyone and it will depend on where you set the line. Um, but you could use that along with the other VCAs if required. You can see there's a new menu, hard hat detection. Now it really is as simple as this. And the hard hat detection, you enable hard hat detection as the function. Then the generation speed refers to the speed of the target, so the person moving towards the camera. Um, the, fast, the higher that number, the faster the target moves. So you obviously you could start at the default or, or lower that and click save. So it's about getting that, you know, general speed of the target. So basically you can draw four regions. So region one, so if you just draw this as a region, so draw area, make it, I don't know, say there, say that's our, one of our regions for instance, click save, the area will go there and then I'm in schedule 24 seven or whichever is applicable for you. And then the linkage method is notify surveillance center, which is our software, etc. upload to FTP memory card or NAS and then trigger alarm output. What most people would do is trigger an alarm output, which could be a light or a sounder, which then, you know, reminds people to put their um, hat on or keep their hat on. So it could be a automated audio message through one of our speaker systems that we sell that says, please wear, remember to wear your hard hat, etc. So it's that gentle reminder. But basically, as soon as you've done that and applied it under live view, 
assume it's already detecting that there's a, a human in this scene but if i go into the area here i don't have a hard hat on but then this would alarm in that area but then obviously it's not going to show you on the screen I guess as they develop the firmware, it might get to a point where it shows you on the screen that I haven't got a hard hat. But effectively, if I step into the area now, that would now alarm because I don't have the hard hat on. So then the, out, the camera output or the software notification. So that's hard hat um, configuration. So under a uh, hard hat detection. So under configuration, let's try a different operating mode system again back into the VCA resource and let's choose well face capture is very simple that's a you know a, a standard face capture protocol so I don't really need to go over that but we've got queue management and face counting so if we go to face counting queue management it's a standard we've done that video before but if we go to face counting and click save the camera will reboot so let it reboot and join me in a second okay so you joined us back now where the camera's rebooted so under face counting and face picture library the first thing if you want to use it with the face picture library to eliminate the face reads and the face picture light and the face picture library you can add your picture library here i've already added the dvs one uh, and dvs staff and left the default now if i go to search you'll see under here um, I've added a face so if I click on here I've uploaded my face here my beautiful mugshot then you can upload more by clicking add upload the JPEG fill in the details delete original picture after modeling so if you want to do that that's fine what you need to do really is select the face there once you've uploaded the faces click modeling and then you can delete the original after modeling if you like click OK that will upload the faces so total one and failed zero so it's batch modeled it now so it succeeded now once you've done that it will recognize me as being in the database and then sort of whilst it will add the count it will tell me um that you know a person like a staff member has been recognized effectively and it will also give you the duplicates so in the face counting you've got the overlay and capture so the default is normally fine but we can adjust these values to get the optimum face capture and the alarm setting you've got alarm uploading a face capture for anyone in the dvs staff list face capture yes face picture comparison yes and people counting alarm and then the people counting duplication so again if it's a duplicate face in the, within a time period yes alarm and upload captured face so you've got your alarm schedule plus your linkage method now the rule is quite simple so you draw your area your region your red box is the region and then this is my count line here so when I come into the store and across this count line it's going to look to see if my face is in the list and then match me but then it'll say enter one and duplicate so you'll see this all working now it's difficult with one person but I'll try my best to show you people counting duplication time so I've set it to zero hours zero uh, minutes so but you can set that to a maximum of 24 hours so anyone that's duplicated within 24 hours will show in there and then create an alarm and then the advanced configuration really is about the engine so we don't really need to do much with that but if i go back to this well if i go to smart display you'll see it sort of should recognize my face as i come in yep so it should try and match me to a list okay so now if i go over here and come into the store Apologies for the walk, my back is still not great. So again, it's matched me there. So I, I entered one person, leave zero, and it's obviously matched me to the database and it gives me some basic uh, information there. I wish I was 27, I'm not. Um, but I get told regularly I look very young for my age. So then if I leave, So two people have entered the store now. It's matched me as that. So again, um, it, it knows me from the list there. But I set the duplicate as zero hours. So again, if I go in and I can adjust the time period then, um, and it's really as simple as that. So it's the face counting, um, you know, for um, adding your staff basically. So very happy with that. Um, so again, it's still saying, oh, I'm 23 on that one. That's brilliant. Okay, so again, the angle um, and the, the the position of the camera is critical when you do these um, counting things and face capture because you really need to get the best angle, the optimum position placement for the camera. 
So what we'll do now is go to the configuration and we'll just do another one, change the operating mode quickly, and then I'll let you enjoy your day. So again, under system, VCA resource, smart event we've already done, multi-target type comparison, multi-target type detection with comparison mode. So I can select that, um, click save and it'll reboot and I'll just show you that quickly. So click save, reboot that and join me in two seconds. Changed it now to multi-target type detection. So under face comparison and modeling, which is the new one, I still got my face in the face picture library. So you can see there, go to search, that's still in there. So I'm gonna do face comparison plus the multi-target type detection. So it gives me information about the sort of the clothes I wear, direction and that you'll see now, really clever. So comparison and modeling, I've selected face picture comparison, enabled the comparison and selected the list effectively. So upload information, yes, of that list, 24 seven plus linkage methods. But under multi-target type detection, um, leave this as default. We can configure this as the defaults are normally fine. But I've added the text overlay. Um, you know, so I've added all of these things to be added to the alarm image itself. So you can get some more detail from the image. So the algorithm is sort of detecting stuff. Plus, it will you know be able to allow you to search based on these. Then um, shield region. Uh, shield region is a masked area, so a, an area of non-detect. Um, if you want to use that under the rule, then I've simply enabled the rule, drawn my detection box, um, plus arming schedule, plus linkage method, and then advanced configuration is more about the engine itself. So what you can actually do now, sorry, if I go into smart display, now it does take a bit of time to um, model this. So if I live view this, I'll walk around a bit and you'll see it should show my face comparison here and plus the analysis of the detail of me in that image there. So I'll just show you quickly. And I'll sort of sing to you at the same time. If I go out of the room. You can sort of see what that did then. So when I left the area, more alarms came through. Um, you can see there's the face comparison list here. So it tells you some details against the comparison within the list. But if I click on here, I get more information about the target itself, the face and body information. So capture time, camera number. So male, age 28. Again, I always get uh, mistakenly aged. So that's good. Middle age, wearing glasses, no. Wearing mask, no. Facial expression, no expression. Wearing hat, no. Full beard, no. Moving direction, left. Top color, black. Bottom color, black. Carrying backpack, no. Carrying things, no. Top tight, short sleeve. Bottom tight, pants. Hairstyle, short hair. So you can see there, it gives you more and it ingrains that detail in the image. So it's like a, an enhanced algorithm that gives you a lot more detail about the person or the object that's detected. And that will then allow you to search, uh, say, like within Hike Central or even within IMS 4200, there's some search parameters that allows you to enable or quicken the search process with enhanced detail. So it's really, really clever. And again, this is just the start of the journey and this will grow and give more features and improve over a very short period of time. So based on that, then that's all I really wanted to show you. But what you could do then is there's no SD card in this, so I can't really play back play back anything because I don't have the SD card, it's added to the NVR. But effectively, um, the only other options you can use for the VCA configuration are under system and VCA resource queue management. Again, we've done that in a previous video. Um, very, very beneficial for retail, for queue length and queue wait time. So in the, the alerts and data can be mined so you can improve the customer uh, experience and then you've got uh well face you've done, we've done all the rest so yeah that's it really so i think i'll love you and leave you there there's lots of detail that we've passed over today so just an insight into what this new ids7 line range can provide so internal external 4 megapixel 8 megapixel 12 megapixel so really high definition good quality imagery plus 
uh, amazing hardware to go with it. I hope you enjoyed the videos, probably loads of questions. Please get in contact with your DVS sales rep or Hike Vision or drop us a, a, a mail if you need. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our content. Other than that, take care and see you next week for another how-to video. Thank you.